in this lecture we will see the operation of a 2 is to 1 marks we'll draw the normal schematic using the transmission gate then we will draw the twisted schematic from the normal schematic diagram and finally the layout so now let's see the theory part of a 2 is to 1 marks This is a 2 is to 1 marks. Marks is nothing but the multiplexer. So it's multiplexer is otherwise known as marks. So this is a 2 is to 1 marks, which indicates that it has got 2 input and 1 output. Two is to one max means it has got two inputs and one output. And we all know that if there are two to the power n number of inputs, one output in a max. then the select line is number of select line needed is n so in this case 2 to the power 1 is true so 2 to the power 1 input 1 output so the number of select line needed is 1 so what's a symbol of a symbol or the structure of a raised to one max so it has got two inputs one output and one select line so let's say the select line is s input is i1 and i0 now we can write it as a b and the output is out so if let's say this is 1 and this is 0 then the operation states that the operation of a 2 is to 1 max states that when the select line is when the select line s is equal to 0 then my output will be i1 whatever the value of i1 will be maybe 0 or maybe 1 when s is equal to 1 then output will be equal to i0 the value of i0 i0 may be again 0 and 1 so now in order to draw the schematic of a twist to one max, we need a pass transistor. So we need two pass transistors or the transmission gates or the transmission gates in order to draw the schematic of a twist to one max. These two pass transistors or the two transmission gates are needed in order to pass the input that is I1 and I0. 
depending on the select line value 0 and 1 so this 0 and 1 is a select line so once it is 0 once it is 1 so when it's 0 when s is equal to 0 that means it is s bar when s is equal to 1 means it should be s and we can use two transmission gates so when there are two transmission gates so here we need an inverter it is there is there should be s and s bar so in a not gate we need one p mos and one n mos and in two transmission gates in the two transmission gates we need two p mos and and two n mos need two p mos and two n mos so now let's see the schematic diagram of a twist one max at first we will draw the two transmission gates that is in this two side this is the transmission gate 1 PMOS and NMOS similarly over here and this is the second transmission gate so we will connect these two and these two will be connected we need one inverter so you can place one inverter here this is a p mos and mos this is shorted this is vdd and this is ground this is a select line s and this is the select line s bar so let's see this is S and this is S bar so here at one point of input this this is the input of the transmission gate 1 output of transmission gate 1 input of transmission gate 2 and the output of transmission gate 2 so inputs will be I0 and I1 with the output will be shorted so the control will be given at the gate because we know gate is the controlling input so at one point we have to give s and the other point you have to give s bar so s is given over here and to this terminal s bar So S bar is connected to S bar is connected to
S bar is connected and this is connected to this okay and S will be connected over here so this is S and this is S bar okay now these are the inputs I0 and I1 if you combine this to output you'll get the final output from here so this is I1 or this is I0 and this is I1 and this is the final output that is out we already know the various terminals that is this is the gate terminal this is gate gate and these are the source terminals source and source drain and drain source source drain drain this is source drain drain and source okay so this is pmos 1 2 p1 n1 p2 n2 and p3 n3 so let us first see the twisted diagram from this normal schematic and later on we will see the operation of this multiplexer so we have to twist these pmos and nmos in order to obtain the twisted schematic so there are total three pmos and three nmos so first draw the pmos and nmos This is PMOS 1. This is PMOS 2. And this is PMOS 3. Similarly, this is NMOS 1. This is NMOS 2. and this is NMOS 3 so P1 N1 P2 N2 this is P3 N3 okay Similarly, we have the terminals. This is drain. Similarly, this is the source and drain. This is first transmission gate. Then source drain. Source drain. Second transmission gate. This is again source drain and source drain. This is the the inverter. So, we know the gate was from here. In the transmission gate, we know very well that the gates are connected in opposite. So, we have to draw the transmission gate. Uh, we have to draw the schematic diagram in such a way so that it will be easy for us to draw the layout. so we can connect from here ok 
देखिए सो दिस इज दी टू ट्रांस द टू गेट्स आर कनेक्टेड नाउ द सोर्स ऑफ पी मॉस एंड एन मॉस ऑफ अ ट्रांसमिशन गेट आर कनेक्टेड द ड्रेन आर ऑल्सो कनेक्टेड सो कनेक्ट फ्रॉम here to here and connect from here to here similarly this is also the transmission gate source to source drain to drain okay now the source of the inverter is connected to vdd and the source of the nmos source of the pmos is connected to vdd and the source of the nmos is connected to ground the two grounds are uh, the two drains are shorted so connect this to similarly with the gate so the input is s that is the leg line this is s bar so as we know that the in the first transmission gate at the gate terminal s bar is connected that is over here s bar is connected and to this s is connected to transmission gate 2 as is connected to transmission gate 1 as bar is connected so s is connected to transmission gate 2 so this is poly and this is metal over here there is poly as bar this is poly again poly so directly can't go from here poly this is as bar this is poly and this is metal so not a problem okay, as bar and here s this is also poly Okay, so now you can see that there is overlapping between metal layer and the poly layer this is poly to poly but here there is a overlapping between the metal and the poly layer so here you have to place a poly contact in the layout i'm just showing here okay so now the only thing left is connecting the drains in order to obtain the output and giving the inputs so this is i 0 and this is i 1 okay now the drains have to be connected okay and this is the final output out so this is i0 this is i0 this is i1 s and out so here okay from here we have to draw the 
layout of it was to one marks so in order to draw the layout of a twist to one marks from the twister schematic first we have to draw the pmos then the nmos and in order to draw the pmos first we have to draw the anvil Okay, we can do one thing, we can clear this so that we can get enough space. So we'll draw the anvil first. So we need space for 3 P diffusion layer. So I think this much will be okay. So this is the anvil. Anvil layer. Now after drawing the anvil layer, next you have to draw the P diffusion layer. So we need 3P diffusion layer because we have 3P MOS. So this is 1. Second one. And then the third one. This is the P diffusion layer. So now this hole is our PMOS. Now after drawing the P diffusion layer, next you have to draw the N diffusion layer. Most equal in area with the P diffusion. So this is the end diffusion layer. Now after drawing the PMOS and NMOS, now we have to label the source gate and drain terminals. First two are the transmission gate third is the inverter as we had drawn in the schematic diagram so source strain source strain and source strain same as in the case of the schematic so we need not mention it so first we have to draw the inverter first In the inverter, first you have to drop the gate so that we can apply the input. So the input to the gate is S and the output will be obtained from the combination of from the drain of the PMOS and NMOS. This is the source drain. Source and drain. Source of the PMOS is connected to VDD. It's connected to VDD. And the source of the NMOS is connected to ground. So 
source of the NMOS is connected to ground. So this is connected by the metal one layer. Now after connecting the radiant ground, next you have to connect the drain. And this is S bar. After constructing the inverter, so this is the inverter part is finished except the contacts. So you can complete the transmission gate or if you want then complete the inverter first by placing the contacts. We need a P diffusion contact over here in order to make a contact between the metal and the P diffusion layer. Similarly over here So this is a P diffusion contact Or you can say the PDC contact Similarly you need to place a contact over here in order to connect the end diffusion layer with the metal so we need a end diffusion contact or we can write it as NDC contact after placing these diffusion contact you can place the substrate contacts in the VDD and ground layer so over here this is the N substrate contact or the NWC contact similarly in the ground you have to place a P substrate contact you can say PWC contact now you have to draw the transmission gates so we know the gates are interconnected in the transmission gate so first connect from here Okay, next from here to here. Okay, now the gates are interconnected. So this gate is connected to S bar. The first gate is connected to S bar and the second gate is connected to S. Before connecting with the inverter, first we will complete the transmission gate. That is, this is the source drain, source drain source source drain 
dream. You know that the sources of the transmission gate and the train of the transmission gate are connected. So Are connected similarly over here. Okay, so now this is input I zero and this is input I one these two are the output so the outputs are connected from here this is out okay now this control input S is connected to the first transmission gate, second transmission gate. So from here we can directly connect S. So S is directly connected and S bar is connected from here in this way this can be connected in this portion so as bar as a metal layer So we can directly connect like this from here. So since there is overlapping between a metal and a poly layer, we need to place a poly contact. So here we need a poly contact. So all the connections are done now you have to place the diffusion contacts here there will be a P diffusion contact similarly over here all these are P diffusion contacts since these are the P diffusion layer Here, this is the end diffusion contact. End diffusion contact. This is the whole layout of a Two is to one marks from the twister schematic. Diagram. Let's see the layout from the normal schematic diagram. Layout from normal schematic.
normal schematic diagram of a 2 is to 1 mux. So as we know this much space will not be enough in order to draw the layout. We can do one thing, we can erase it. Before erasing, we can see the rough sketch. For example, this is the transmission gate one having the input I0 then transmission gate 2 having the input I1 where the output of the two transmission are shorted in order to obtain the final output there is select line here it's S and here it's as well and then we have a inverter where input is S and the obtain output is S bar where S is connected over here and S bar is connected to this and S is connected to this so now let's see the layout when we see the normal schematic first we will draw the transmission gates so for that you need this is the anvil okay then we need the PD diffusion layer okay so this is the P diffusion layer and then we need a N diffusion layer so this is the N diffusion layer Similarly, this is transmission gate 1. We have transmission gate 2. So, similarly, this is N1, then P diffusion, and then the N diffusion layer. Okay, now after drawing this, we have to draw the inverter. So, in our schematic diagram, the inverter was drawn in this form. Okay. Or this is this can be raised and redrawn.
okay this is the n well then p diffusion similarly the n diffusion layer Okay, so now you have to draw the source and drain. This is the source, drain, drain and source. This is the gate. So the gate of the PMOS and NMOS are connected. Okay. okay so this is inverter input that is the select line s this is the source of the pmos which is connected to vdd is connected to VDD and the source of the NMOS is connected to ground okay so now after connecting these sources the two drains connected in order to get s bar so this is s bar and this is metal one this is the poly layer Okay, now before placing the contacts or we can place the contacts in order to complete this inverter here we need to place a p diffusion contact in order to make a contact between the p diffusion and the metal layer so this is p diffusion contact or EDC contact similarly we have to place a P diffusion contact over here this is a N diffusion contact this is a N diffusion contact or a NDC contact in order to make a contact between the end diffusion layer and the metal layer. Similarly, a NDC contact is placed over here. Then, after completing the diffusion contacts, you have to place the substrate contacts. So, this is the N substrate and P substrate contact. So this is the N substrate contact. Or the NWC contact. And this is the P substrate contact or PWC contact. contact or the PWC contact now after drawing the inverter let's complete the transmission gate 
now these are the source train then source train source train and source train now these are the gate we know that the gates are connected in a different way so you can connect from here Okay. Okay. Now these two are connected so this is s bar and this is s so this s bar is connected directly over here and from here we need a metal contact metal layer from here so there is overlapping between the metal and the poly layer so we have to place a poly contact over here this is a poly contact now this s is connected to this so we can connect like this Now I can connect like this. Okay. Now after connecting S and S bar, you have to complete the connection between the sources and the drains of the transmission gate. The sources of the transmission gate are shorter so source to source then this is train to train similarly here source to source and drain to drain this source is input 1 that is i0 this is input 2 that is i1 these two drains are connected to get the output so we can connect from here directly From here we will obtain the output that is out now the only thing left is the diffusion contacts so here is the and diffusion no, sorry here this is the p diffusion contact since this is the 
the diffusion layer in contact with the metal here this is the end diffusion contact here again this is PDC and this is NDC okay so this is the layout from the normal schematic from normal schematic now let's see the truth table of a twist to one marks the truth table of twist to one marks So the controlling input is the select line. So I write select or S and the output is out. Okay. So when select is 0 then output is i1 select is 1 output is i0 we have to check whether the truth table is correct or not this i1 and i0 can have it's a one bit value so it can be either zero or one so now let's see what happens if we apply this to the schematic so in the schematic diagram we have transmission gate one This is transmission gate 1 and this is the transmission gate 2. Okay. This is S bar. S bar and this is S this is input I0 this is I1 let me short this too this is the final output out oh. now when s is equal to 0 then what will happen suppose this is p1 n1 this is p2 and this is n2 so when s is equal to 0 then s bar is equal to 1 s bar is equal to 1 so here pmos 1 at pmos 1 we have 1 at nmos 1 we have 0 as we know that if input is 0 then 
vmos is on and nmos is off if it's one then vmos off and nmos will turn on so when s is zero you can say there is a reverse condition so p1 and n1 will turn off that means the transmission gate 1 is inactive this is the transmission gate 1 this is the transmission gate 2 in transmission gate 2 you can see here at p2 0 is applied at n mos 1 is applied so p2 and n2 will turn on that is transmission gate 2 is active then transmission to gate transmission gate 2 is active then the input i1 is seen at the output so out is equal to i1 i1 can have any value that is if it's 0 then out will be 0 if 1 then out will be 1 so whatever the value of the i1 will be there at that point will be seen at the output so when s is equal to 0 then out is equal to i1 so this is verified from the truth table this was the first case then the second case is when s is equal to 1 when s is equal to 1 first draw the schematic Okay. this is transmission gate 2 this to a connector so this is S and this is S bar here it's S bar this is I0 and this is I1 output out so now this is p1 n1 p2 n2 now when s is equal to 1 that is s1 means s bar will be 0 s bar will be 0 so we know that when input is equal to 0 then the pmos will be on and the nmos will be off if it's 1 
PMOS will be off and NMOS will be on. So now when input is zero, when S is equal to one, in the transmission gate one, this is TG1 and this is TG2. In TG1, in transmission gate 1, you can see that at P1, 0 is applied, that is at P MOS, 0 is applied, and at N MOS, 1 is applied. So P1 and N1 will turn on, that is, transmission gate 1 will be active while in the transmission gate 2 s is 1 that is p2 at p2 1 is applied and at n 0 is applied so p2 and n2 will turn off that is transmission gate 2 is inactive okay now when transmission gate 1 is active then the input i0 will pass to the output since these two will be short circuit on means short circuit off means open so at out we obtain i0 even here also i0 is a one bit value it can be 0 it can be 1 if i0 is 0 then at output you'll get 0 if i0 is 1 then the at output you'll get 1 so when s is equal to 1 then out is equal to i0 so this is also verified if you want at s1 when s is equal to 1 the output should be i1 and when s is equal to 0 output should be i when s is equal to 0 out should be i0 we have to just replace this by i0 and this by this by i1 and this by i0 so the function of the mux over here out is equal to s into i0 plus s bar into I1. This is the function of the 2 to 1 max. The function of the 2 to 1 max.